but the lives of many, many others. I pray that it will continue to change lives. Yes, amen. Matthew 6, 14 and 15. The Bible says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. This is a powerful scripture. This is a command by God that we must forgive people their trespasses against us. This, this is saying that if we do not forgive, neither will our Heavenly Father forgive us. That's huge. I don't know about you, but I want to be forgiven and have peace with God. Amen. And here we get to a point of why is forgiveness so important with the Lord? Christianity is all about forgiveness. Forgiveness is spoken 146 times in the original Greek translation. 146 times. That's a lot. The Bible says in Philippians 2, 5, and 7, Have this in mind among yourselves, which is in your... Which is, is yours in Christ Jesus who though he was in the form of God did not count equally with God a thing to be grasped but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant being born in the likeness of men so Jesus became our salvation he came in the flesh so we could be forgiven of our sins he is asking us to do the same to be quick to forgive as we have been forgiven of our sins by him why why would we need salvation and to be forgiven well the bible says in romans 3 23 and 24 for we all fell short of the glory of god and are all justified freely by the grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus, all of us have sinned. None of us are perfect. Only Jesus Christ was perfect. All of us need to be redeemed because we have all sinned. We need forgiveness to be able to have a relationship with our Heavenly Father. Jesus Christ did that on the cross when he, when he said in John 19.30, It is finished. He gave us the precious, precious gift of grace to accept that forgiveness and have peace with God by faith in Him. That is, that is what forgiveness does. It creates peace in our personal lives with God, the people that harmed us in any way, and the people around us. By forgiving people, we can lead them to Jesus Christ. That otherwise might not be possible God can use forgiveness in supernatural way forgiveness is love loving people more than the circumstance or the event that happened in our lives as we are commanded in Matthew 22 39 you shall love your neighbor as yourself <coughs> forgiveness changes lives as forgiveness changed my life in a radical supernatural way, I have had a supernatural experience with forgiveness. Forgiveness changes lives. Before I was a Christian in November 2011, I went out with an owner of a company that I worked with. Working, this guy I was working for, I did not want to go. God was speaking to me. I didn't know him, so I didn't know his voice. I didn't know. But I went out with him. I did. He talked me into it. I tried everything to do, everything to do what was right that night. Leaving my truck at his house, doing everything you would think in a worldly standard to do what's right. I rode in his car while he drove. I thought, he's my boss, I'll be okay. That's what I thought. I thought, he'll watch over me. When we got to that bar that night, we began to drink so heavily 
The next thing I know, I was blacked out. The next thing I remember, <laughs> I was in the emergency room and they were frantically working on me. They were freaking out. And I didn't know any idea what was going on. They said that I was in a major car crash and that I was driving. I yelled out, there's no way my boss is driving. The next thing I know was back out. I woke up in the ICU, ICU, ICU with my legs, both my legs in cast. Tubes and wires all over me. I was in such shock, I didn't have a clue what happened to me. They told me that I was in a major crash and that everyone involved got hurt and that I was driving. It was crazy. And I'm such a sensitive person that I just shut down. I found out that there was a 22 year old girl that lost her life in that crash. I was so devastated, I became lost, depressed, and feeling my life was over. I didn't dispute it. I didn't know what happened. I didn't dispute it. Because I didn't know what happened. How could I say that I was or wasn't? The week that I was in an ICU, a chaplain came and said, I heard you, you would like to pray. I said, yes. He prayed with me. I cried out on this man's shoulder, repenting and crying and emptying my soul out to this man. He came in one more time before I left and I went home. I was in a wheelchair for months. For months I was in a wheelchair. I couldn't walk because I had crushed both my feet. I had to learn how to walk again. As I was home, I felt a new change in me. Every day I would have to pray. Still smoking cigarettes, but I'd have to go pray. Eight months of healing, two, two lawyers, and a $2 million price tag, I ended up in court and sentencing. I took whatever punishment that was coming my way, just walking it out. As I was in sentencing, the mother of the girl that died, you know what she said? Bless you, child. Bless you, child. Bless you. When it came to my time to speak, I said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't remember what happened. I honestly don't know, but I'm so sorry. Next thing I know, they're giving me 10 years in prison and hauled me off in cuffs. I ended up in prison in shock. It's not a good place. Next thing I know, they were offering me a Christian program and a faith pod. Talk about God, right? right? A faith pod. It was a. Um, I got into a year-long program by Bill Gothard. Anybody heard of him? Yes. It was a year-long program about Jesus Christ. Two months later, I was sitting at a table by myself, and I told the Lord, "If you are real, and all this is real, I surrender my life over to you." Look where I ended up. I put my life and my trust in your hands. I didn't know any salvation prayer. I was by myself. I just released it. I said, I surrendered my life to you. So that day I became a Christian. And I was on fire. I was a sponge. I just wanted to learn all I could. I took every class, every Bible class, everything I could do to study the Bible. And the Lord kept feeding me more and more and more. And I kept just absorbing everything. I became a teacher's aide, speaking in front of a class of inmates. All within months. The Lord was moving my life, and I was on fast track learning about Jesus Christ and his word. Three prisons later, I ended up in the same prison that my brother Antonio. We were praying, seeking, praising God, and on fire for the Lord. I became filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, seeing visions of prophecy. Still, I was on, I was on uh, preaching, I was preaching the word, in a choir, singing the gospel. Traveling all over Colorado as an inmate. Can you imagine that? That's what God can do. Out of 22,000 inmates, I was one of seven that got to leave the prison. We shared the same room. We prayed and fasted and seek the Lord with all our hearts, mind, and soul. 
as we still are today. And it came for me to go to my parole hearing, which is a testimony, it's pretty crazy. But my brother Antonio said, brother, I will not leave my knees until you return. I will be praying for you the whole time. There were people in Mexico and different places praying and fasting for me as I went to go see my, this parole officer. I was praying, speaking the word of God, just doing all I knew to remain faithful and to speak the word as I went. As I was in the warden's room and people were coming out from seeing her, they were like, oh man, this, there's no way I'm going home. I'm so scared. This is where the supernatural power of forgiveness came into my life. If anyone knows forgiveness, it's me. I was sitting in that parole hearing. This is what God can do with forgiveness. I was sitting there. I could feel the presence of God. Literally feel it. And I was always in the parole hearing. I could so feel his presence. I sat down, scared of my wits, just scared. And you know what the woman said? I just got off the phone with the girl's mother that got killed. She said, I just got off the phone with her. And I'm like, cool, okay? She's gonna take this. And she said, I just got off the phone with her. And she wants me to tell you that her daughter is in heaven with Jesus. And she wants to go to heaven to be with her daughter. She wants me to tell you that she forgives you and that she doesn't want you to suffer anymore and that she wants us to release you now. That's forgiveness. I took her daughter from her, not knowing what I'm doing, but I did, driving a vehicle. And this same woman, I have a 22-year-old daughter, beautiful daughter. I have thought about this, but I do the same thing as her. Would I forgive as she did? Would I? Would you? That's a big question. It's not something that you can just answer. Yeah, yeah. It's not. I was crying. I was crying. The lady telling me the parole officer was crying. Everyone in this room were in shock when the mother just said. They were in complete shock. They were like, this is unheard of unheard of this is true biblical forgiveness as we are commanded in Matthew chapter 6 14 and 15 the parole woman said I'm gonna put you up for parole but not not because of the good that you have been doing but because of what the mother said that is the supernatural power of God's grace and forgiveness I can tell you within weeks I was out it only it was only because forgiveness that I'm standing here today because of forgiveness because that woman forgave me and not only that okay and praying for me absorb that she was the one praying for me God revealed it to me because people ask me who's been praying for you who who's been praying for you my family are not Christians Who's been praying for me? She was. Wow. That's so good. So amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Praise the Lord. Because that woman forgave me and praying for me, the God movement in my life in mighty ways. Now I have been serving the Lord faithfully. I have become a Christian minister. I have my own ministry now, International Ministry of Christ. I also serve at Avamir as a nursing home for four years. This place has 160 people teaching, doing services, Bible studies, helping people one-on-one -on -one with struggles that they have in their own lives. I have been praying over people. There have been mighty healings like cancer, joint pain, many people coming to Christ, baptism, casting out demons, and street ministry. All done by what? Forgiveness. Gone to a mission trip to Mexico. Preached the gospel. The people have gotten saved because of what? Forgiveness in my life and so much, much, much more. Why? Because of forgiveness. All because she forgave me. I am here preaching to you. That's what forgiveness can do. That's why God said forgive. 
All because of the power of forgiveness, the Lord has used me to touch other people's lives with the power of God. When you forgive people in your life, you are releasing the power of God to move in mighty ways. That's what forgiveness does. We're releasing them for God to do work. We as believers do not deserve the forgiveness that Jesus Christ has given us. No one deserves it. That's grace. Grace is because Jesus, none of us, all have sinned. None of us deserve it. The scripture says if you did one sin, you sinned them all. I mean, I was extremist. I did them all. But hey, there are... <laughs> but we all have sinned. It is a choice. It is a choice that through scriptures we are commanded to make. We are commanded to make that choice. If we want to live in this out, if we want to imitate Jesus, we have to forgive. We have to. He says, if, if you do not forgive, I will not forgive you. That's powerful. I want to, I want to be forgiven, Lord. For, please, Lord, anyone that I haven't forgiven, bring to light. When you forgive, you're not saying what that person did was right, but you're saying, Lord, I forgive this person so you can carry this. God never intended us to carry any burden. Unforgiveness is poison, and it, it, it destroys our life, our health, and it creates a hardened heart. We have no peace with ourselves, people around us, and we have no peace with God. That's poison. God spoke to me and said, now that you have been forgiven by this mother, you could never not forgive anyone in your life. My brother Antonio still spoke about that a couple days ago. He said, that's just wrecked me. Changed my life. Because when I, after I got out, once I got out of that meeting and I got back to my room, that's exactly what I said. The Lord brought that to my mind. I could never not forgive anyone. Ever. Because of what she did for me. I remember I was taught by Glenn Brown about forgiveness. This is a mentor, uh, a mentor of mine. He was my teacher. Amazing, my man. I was praying in the spirit in prison for 20 days. It's a teaching that I have. If you're curious, I can give it to you. I, I carry it through. So you forgive people every day. And every day for 20 days, the Lord brought from that point on all the way down to my childhood, there's more and more people to light that I needed to forgive. And every, every day, the Lord put someone new on my heart to forgive. That was so powerful. I had such peace that I never knew before. I even got deliverances through it. God, God was cleansing my heart. You see, in Ezekiel 36, 26, and 27 says, And I will give you a new heart, and a new spirit I will put within you. I will remove that heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart. Uh, remove that heart of stone from flesh and give you a heart of flesh. As we forgive people that have hurt us, through the years, it chisels away the heart of stone and softens the heart of flesh so we can love as Christ-like love. I believe God is speaking to you, us right now. There are people in our lives that we need to forgive, that we need the forgiveness of Jesus. We need to forgive everyone that's in our life. We need to come to the altar. We need to pray, speak publicly, and forgive the person in your life that you need to forgive. Release that person as God has forgiven you. These people in our lives... As we forgive, it frees that person. And how I am serving the living God now, pray for this, for that, for that same person. It could be a, a, a father, a mother, brother, sister, a boss, whoever. Somebody cut you off in traffic, whoever. We forgive them. We release them. You never know as you forgive somebody that it could be somebody like me. It could be somebody that turns out to be a pastor, to be a preacher. What is it in his name? Uh, Brandon Heath. He sings this song. He says, the Lord takes and makes prisoners into pe preachers. It's what God does. God can do anything. 
And now look at, you know, this woman, she did a mighty thing, right? She did a mighty thing of biblical forgiveness. And we hold on to forgiveness as somebody might flip us off or talk badly about us or whatever, and we can't forgive them? And what did Jesus do on the cross? Jesus was bitten, uh, beaten and scourged and everything. God is so holy, he left heaven so we could be forgiven. And all he's asking is just to release them. So I just pray that everyone tonight would really seek God's face in this matter. I really pray that there would be a revival in your heart. I pray that the peace would come radically in and change your life. Release the people that have hurt you. You never know what they could become. A pastor like me and serve God in supernatural ways. You never know. This is how we change the world. We change the world by loving people enough to forgive them. Just as Christ Jesus did on the cross when he said, when he was bleeding out from his beaten body, he said, it is finished. I know the world can be saved through him, right? We know that because of forgiveness, right? First John three sixteen, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For he did not come to condemn the world, but the world might be saved through him. So I just pray that we as Christians would start forgiving really living in the life of forgiveness to be quick to forgive so lord father we just come to you lord we just thank you lord father for the forgiveness that you have given us lord that you left heaven you left literally left your throne your perfect holy righteous throne to come to save us from our sins lord father that you are so supernatural so powerful Oh, Lord, Father, that the power of forgiveness can change this world. So I just pray that all the people, Lord, Father, that are doing evil, all the people that are uh, lost, that are doing drugs or alcohol or living in life in pornography or whatever it is, Lord, Father, their vices, that we would love them as you love them. Because it doesn't matter the extremity of what they're doing. Jesus still loves them. Are we going to still love them? That's the answer. So we just pray, Lord Father, for that key to be applied to our life, that we would walk it out and just be forgiveness, be love. I pray that we as a church would not point fingers at each other and not condemn each other, but actually love each other as you love, each, love us, as we are your children. So I just pray, Lord Father, that tonight, Lord Father, I just pray right now and I just declare and decree and just release you, Holy Spirit, to speak to all of our hearts. I just release you, Lord Father, to speak to everyone that is listening. That you would point out the people that are in our lives that we have not forgiven. That we are still carrying that. We're carrying them on our backs, on our shoulders, as weights, as bricks that are carrying in our heart, making it our heart of stone. I pray, Lord, and release, Lord Father, that you, Holy Spirit, would bring that to light. That we... Lord Father, and prompt us that we would forgive them and truly forgive them and love them as you love them. Yes. We just thank you, Lord Father. We love you. We praise you. We worship you. And we thank you for giving us, Lord. Thank you for the forgiving gift of grace, Lord. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen.